Hi, this is Steve and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm continuing on to session six of this series of completion of the calculator. I'm going to kind of demonstrate what I've got going on here currently. So what you're looking at right now is uh, the calculator program. And if I just press like the keys, for example, and what it does is it's as responding to keys, as I showed you earlier, if you're pressing the keys, it's actually going to change what you see on the screen as I select the screen that is so if I just do like 5 times 7 well there's still something wrong with um, the actual the multiplier so we're going to leave those alone so if you just say like 5 plus 6 hit enter and it does it otherwise printing all the other stuff 5 minus 2 get some weird numbers when you do that 5 plus 2 7 and then you add 1 add 8 add 1 you got 9 add 1 so you can see it's kind of working add 4 it shifts the numbers and changes them though but you can see it's definitely working here and if I press the C key it clears the calculator window and also clears the top window here at the, at the screen here so everything's currently working the division <coughs> divides by zero so it ends up with an error like that so that would be a good way to get started anyway so I added a lot more stuff onto it um, you can kind of see the program here kind of where we left off right here was the key section I think I'll just go into that and before I do that actually I'm going to go ahead and change this section here and I'm going to add a little poke command here so I can kind of change the cursor color let me just kind of play with it here for a minute and see which color I want to use I think green will be good we'll use green so we just go right here 646 Comma three dose of 2010. And that should change the top. Oops, error. What did I do wrong? Oh, I spelled it wrong. So what I want to do is I want to change the calculator back when I'm done. You got the three here, and then we're just going to use like I don't know seven maybe or something. You know, like yellow or something like that. There we go. Got a yellow calculator. <coughs> so as I demonstrated from before, if I pull up the calculator here, I pulled the wrong dang thing. Anyways, I pull up the calculator. You can see it right here running in the background. Gotta close the clips here. Alright, so anyways, um, you can see it's kind of duplicated, it's got the 7, 8, 9, <coughs> it's got the slash over here, 4, 5, 6, asterisk, 1, 2, 3, minus, and then a 0, period, plus, and it should actually be equals, but I can change that, change that right now actually. That's it. Oh, wrong one. Where's at the bottom? Somewhere at the bottom here. Oh, I think it just started over again is what it did. Just went back to the top again, so I'll just leave it. The way it was. Good enough. Whoops. Trying to get a different kind of looking text here. I think the green's good. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to explain where we kind of left off, which is right here in the keys section. I hope my audio didn't just kick out. Anyways, we left off the keys, so here's where we kind of left off at right here. This one actually prints the numbers to the screen. What I changed in here is I added this line right here, TM strings 
equals str string cv. Oh no, I actually had that. That just calculates. It turns what you type in the key into a number. This RT is setting a flag to say that we press the enter key or the return key. This goes up to 3010 down here, which basically captures the keystroke. So this KV LP equals CV. <coughs> this is a numbered array. So essentially it's going to take and it's going to calculate LP and move it up by one, the pointer by one here. So it's basically an incrementer. <coughs> and then this is going to put whatever we captured in that keystroke into this array so we can kind of keep track of which keys we're pressing. And this is keeping track of the plus key. This is setting a flag for the plus key. I just calculator flag um, sets it to one to say we're pressing the plus key. And that's used for my calculations so I know if we're going to be doing addition, multiplication, multi I'm sorry, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And these right here are just basically clearing the lines that show the plus, minus, you know, multiplier and divider or divisor. And then here we got a C. So if you're pressing the C key, it's going to erase the screen. And this erases all the arrays and essentially clears the screen. So if we go to 6020, I'll kind of show you that. You can see right here it clears the calculator memory. So it's basically erasing all those key values that we had stored before setting them back to zero, that's how you erase it and start over. And this is actually repositioning the, no I'm sorry, this is erasing the display line of the calculator. So it's erasing this top part of the line right here. So it doesn't have, like if you leave this one here for example, it's not numbers, you hit C, puts it back to zero. Oops, did I do that? Okay, and this next line here is just going to put the zero in the position, just like if we had pressed clear here, it positions a zero. This one kind of puts it in the center, but it, it still clears it. And then this is going to erase the screen memory. I'll give you an example of screen memory real quick here. We'll just start at the top location. It's 1024. Set a value, like 33 or something. Do that again. Say a little thing at the top there. We just go here, it right beside it, <coughs> 55296, comma, number, and now you can see it's red. This is actually red up here. So if we change it to something else, it'll change whatever, based on whatever we type in. And if you wanted to move it, you can move it somewhere, but you still have to position how many places you move it. So if I move it to 34, that would be 10. I would just add 10 onto this. And change the color. Now we got the color changing over there. You can also change the characters here by changing this. I think one is A or something like that. Yeah, one is A. So just like that. So that's basically how screen memory works. And moving on. Next thing we're doing is uh, we already did this in the previous example, so we check the return key. Goes to the 4520. Let's take a look at that line. So once we press the return key, we're going to go down here and we're going to begin our calculations. So first, we're going to set the result to zero every time. I do this so we don't end up with a bunch of extra calculations that don't belong there. This is looping in through one or however many times we press the key. And this is what this LP is keeping track of, how many times you press keys. So if you press four and five, that means this would be two. If you press four, five, and three, it would be three, and so on. This CA is the calculator value. It's saying if we chose the, um, the addition, it's going to use this one for the operator for the addition. If we chose the CA equals two, and um, return is active. So we press the return key. Then it's going to minus. The same thing for this one, we're going to be doing the multiplying and then we're going to be doing the dividing based on these keystrokes and these key flags. And we're going to loop through until it's done and then keep adding to this RS. So this basically allows us to accumulate the values and we, that's how we see them changing. This one right here is just positioning just like before, 214,5 is 5 down from the top of the screen. And then this 211 is 15 over from this side left to right. And you just count over 15. 
and that's kind of what I talked about, I just positioned that. And this just returns it back. Okay. Where are we at now? <coughs> record the key values. I think I went over this already. This records the key values. I'm not sure why I left this one in here. It must have been from before. I could probably just take that one out. So I think I could take 30, 15, and 30, 20 out to be safe. Let's see if it works. I notice it's actually highlighting those all the time because it's already putting them in screen memory. But anyways, I just have to make them the background. Why these are printing blue is because the background was changed. Originally it was 14, but now we changed it to 7. So if we change it back to 14, it'll go back to normal. So we just go up here and just change this to 14, and we're good. There we go. Okay, so 4 times 2, or 4 plus 2. Uh, what happened here? 4 plus 2, there we go, 6, plus 1, 7, <coughs> plus 7, 14, <coughs> so that works good. everything done shows the display results yeah I think that's pretty much everything this just highlights the um, this highlights when you press on the key I think I might have explained this already so it's called highlight multipliers it's gonna turn them red that's what the two is for the screen may return them red there and yeah, I think that's pretty much everything we've done and then we added some new values up here I probably didn't explain this before but we added the top part of the calculator the display section and it prints down here at the bottom once we print the bottom of the calculator it prints right here somewhere here right here actually I'm sorry so it prints right here the TPs is going to print this top line the DI is just going to print the display DI for display and then this just adds the new section to the top parts of the calculator this we've already explained in the previous video. This is basically just draw on the calculator. And I think that's it. So have a go at it. Now maybe later I'll try to put a download for it if you want to play with it. But that's essentially it. So let me just kind of um, go section by section here so I can kind of slow down and show it to you. So you can pause it as you're going through it. to be a pretty large program, huh? Yes, sorry. Let's see here. The other thing, if I haven't explained it, GoSub will go to a line, like for example, this goes to 2010. We go to 2010 here from line 145. It'll print this, and let's go down a little further. <clears throat> when it hits a return, it's going to go back to that line where it came from. So each time you see a GoSub here, when it's done, as an example, this one, this process calculations, once you hit the plus key, it's going to go to 5030, do what it needs to do, it's going to return back to this line, and just jump down to the next line underneath 190 and so on. So that's it. So go ahead and play with it if you like it. Uh, please like and subscribe. I had to record this video twice, so originally I was going to sit there and type it all out, but I guess that's kind of boring anyway. But anyways, we can probably move on to some good stuff now. If people are asking about games and other stuff, but we'll kind of see where it goes from here. Or if you want to see more tutorials, let me know too. This is Steve Marl signing off. Um, appreciate it. Um, any subscri new subscribers, anybody interested in more stuff, just let me know.